Hey guys, welcome back to Chris and Retro. Um, tonight's video, actually, I'm going to share with you something I saw today that I found to be tremendously inspirational. Uh, you know, I talk a lot about my own spiritual, the context of my spiritual life and what I, what I believe to be true. And I, it's kind of a shame that I have to, um, I don't have to, but I, it's kind of a shame that we are in a culture right now that I, I consider this subject matter before I bring it on the show. Um, I'm not ashamed of what I believe, and I'm certainly not ashamed to be Chris and all the context that Chris is, but I find it interesting because even as I share, it's more accepted. It's not, not those that don't believe what I believe, um, or those that understand where I'm coming from. I'm not really worried about that. Honestly, I get more flack from those that are, you know, devout Christians candidly, because I don't really fit the mold. You know, I, I'm, um, while I believe in God and I, I a hundred percent co-sign that, um, and how to know him, um, it, my challenge is around the religious construct and what that all stands for and everybody's version of it. Um, I know what it means for me. And I'll share with you tonight. I think probably you'll see where I'm coming from best in this video that I'm going to share with you tonight. It's a very short clip on Instagram. I'd never heard of this guy before. And um, I now know. <laughs> so I'll start with one basic story. So when, when I was last incarcerated, um, I'll, I'll back up even before that. I grew up in a home that was a church going home. Like when I was a kid, I mean, we would do Wednesday church, Sunday church. And if there was like any type of other church stuff going on, we were doing it. My parents were very much involved in that church. We even had like this guy that um, like we'd have missionaries who come in and one guy cast out demons, not, not in our church, but he'd been known to do that, I guess, in Florida. Um, he stayed in our house for a while. I mean, so there was a lot of stuff that my dad didn't always co-sign, but you know, it, it was in and around church, quote unquote, ministry. And my father was actively involved in a lot of that stuff. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't a Christian in that environment. You know, I mean, I was around a Christian context in the environment. I was I was raised in a Christian environment and for many in many cases. But uh, my own um, Christianity and my salvation did not come in that season in life. It took me going through all the other things to understand that I couldn't do it. And I needed something more. And so that's where I found God to be the only solution for my mind and for my heart and for the direction in my life. And what I found also to be true by, by accepting that I've had opened my world up to possibilities I would never have known. And so what is interesting is that all started. So I have all this you know, history that's around church and things like that around religion, so to speak. Um, and my parents are very faithful Christian people, but they can't make somebody else be something that, you know, it just kind of has to be your thing. And um, what's interesting is through all that time and all that education, I guess you could say, I didn't really understand who God was until um, I went through a season of addiction and had to climb out of it. And I had nothing left in me to climb out of it. And while I was incarcerated, I was actually given a Bible and I've kept that Bible. It's right here. Um, it's nothing fancy about it. And what's kind of funny, and I'll share with you just a real quick story on this. Um, I was a trustee in the last place, and that used first sticker came from the bread that was there. And the reason I used that is um, I was on a shot called Vivitrol to help me with my alcohol uh, cravings on the way out of jail. And so the last week I was there, they gave me this shot. And um, you have to know that you have to put one in one. Uh, it goes alternates butt cheeks in which one you put it in. <laughs> so I got this brilliant idea with one of my. Uh, um, fellow trustees that I would take one of these used first stickers off of the bread in the kitchen and stick it on my butt. And, um, so when I went to the nurse, they got a used first sticker from my butt. Um, I thought for sure, you know, they'd give me some kind of grief for it, but they didn't. I mean, I had been pretty easy going while I was there. And so I just stuck it in my Bible because I thought it was kind of funny that, um, this is also what I should be using first. Well, anyway, my, th that long story to get to the point is this basic Bible came in a wrapper. They took the wrapper out of it for me. It had nothing in it, no notes or anything. I didn't know what to do with it. So I started reading. And I think I've shared on the show, I started with Psalms. And that was because, you know, David was kind of a um, brutal guy, um, passionate guy, liked to write songs and things like that, loved women. You know, I kind of understood where this man was coming from, and yet he still, God saw him special. And so that made sense to me. Um, and throughout my journey, it's been like that. So I don't really, I don't really feel like I fit into the regular religious context because I don't really, it aggravates me candidly. Um, but as far as Chris sitting in a jail cell, my conversations with God and what I understood him to be through the, the Bible, the only place that you can really speak to me, um, became very real. And so what I'm about to share with you is a gentleman that is most of what's in this video is words from the Bible. Like there's other stuff he's putting in here, obviously the energy around it, 
but it's mostly words from the Bible. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because when you want to know how I think about God and what he is, this is why Psalms mattered to me and why, and this message that's being sent by this gentleman matters to me a lot. And um, if you want to know how my mind thinks about God in that context, for this one portion of what we talk about on the show, I couldn't think of a better illustration of what I think about God than what this guy talks about. And um, hopefully you'll find benefit in it and understand where I'm coming from. So without further uh, ado, as they say, I will share with you. So this gentleman, his name is, um, he goes by Dog Culture and he calls himself Big Dog. Never heard of him before in my life. I'm in bad shape, bro. So many people got hurt in the process of me dealing with my hurt. Yeah, you know the saying, hurt people hurt people. And so because I was hurt, all I could do was hurt people. That's a bar for you. I know it hurts that you burn down every door that you walk in. But let me tell you something, in case you didn't know. He say, I call you always to triumph. He say, trust in me and I see you through. Everything that he's saying right now is why so you know people when people cower from the bible i mean I, I was even in a situation here where i'm talking about addiction and talking about you know rebuilding lives and i have i share a lot of opinions with a lot of people that don't believe in the bible at all um and then i find it, i have to be cautious about presenting this on here and i'm like why am i doing that because it's very much what i believe and i felt like this man illustrates it most in the fact that you can see this is not just um you know Susie Sunshine, the Bible has a lot of power to it. And a lot of what he's talking about here is the reason I could co-sign for, because for me, candidly, I needed a message of war. I knew the life that I was coming, taking back. I could not have it be something wimpy and light. And I found in the spiritual nature of every other thing I investigated, it was all this foofy crap. And I, in the Bible, as I was reading it and the way that I think about things really was a message of, of a battle with a King. And I was a soldier and he gave me words and, and a message that helped me understand that I'm exactly that in the construct of what he's asking me to be. And so when I when you hear what's being said here, most of what he's doing is literally quoting the Bible. He said, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. If you've turned over a new leaf, if you gave your life back to Christ, then I'm here to tell you right now, your condition does not determine your position. You your condition does not determine your position. And that is a huge component with recovery. Spiritual component aside, if we just talk about the plan and the motion and the movement to go forward and the progress that you're making, your current condition does not determine your position. If on day one, you are pending charges, um, family falling apart, broke as heck, medical problems, shaky, sick, going through withdrawals, whatever else, but because it's day one and you're not using, you're in day one. Your position is a position of recovery, regardless of what your condition is. You're in day one. The other spiritual component, that'll that'll also be the same thing. You know, day one, when I accepted God and said, look, I, I'm, I'm all about this, save my life. Um, I was a felon. I was a alcoholic. Uh, you know, I would, had a lot of trouble still in my life. I knew I couldn't do it alone. And that's where that came from. So um, same thing happens outside of the spiritual component too. Our position is really nothing to do with our condition. You are a son of the most high, a child of the almighty God who deals with what he deals with because he's sitting on the throne, who says all things are possible to them who believe. Cast your cares on me for I care for you. Huge part of my anxiety. Cast your cares on me because I care for you. You know, that we one of the things we deal with is the things that are out of our control. Um, you know, the things we should own and the things we shouldn't own and understanding the difference and all that stuff. It's a biblical principle. Cast your cares on, on him because he'll care for you. And he does. And I mean, it, it's with faith. It's not like, oh, God, I hope you take care of this. But it's, it has everything to do with my mindset and how it is that I see his delivery in my life. And also, where am I? What, how am I living my life? Am I living my life in a way that is, you know, on purpose for my purpose? Or am I out there just floating around doing the same shady crap and professing that I'm something different? Stop thinking about what people think about. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of people judging you. They got some skeletons. It's just in the closet. You just brave enough to keep yours in the light. I'm gonna leave my past where it belongs and look to my future because my future is greater than what I've been through. I am greater than my storm. What happens to me does not define me. What I do from this point on is
That's what defines me. And I'm going to walk in my light. I'm going to walk in my victory. And I'm going to trust God all the way through. So the latter shall be greater than everything that I've been through. And I'm going to give my life back to the one who gave me life. Big dog. So that was motivating to me. I don't know what it does for you. That was motivating for me because what it did is it just reminded me one more time. I, I don't know if you run the same problem, but I tell you what, I keep score of my own shortcomings. So, and I think that's, I think that's, you know, the evil design is to bring me down by letting me know that uh, you even know you're a scumbag. You know, that's what my mind will tell me. Um, I, I don't have to be defined by my history. I can use my history. And as we talked about in the last video, you know, my war stories connect with you. And to let you know, I sort of understand things. I mean, I don't necessarily know your exact story, but I kind of get it. I understand what it means to be exhausted and scared and lost and still craving all the things that got you there. I understand all that. But where, where we are in life and how we grow um, and what we do going forward is far more important than what we did historically. Um, that's also true if you've done some great things historically. You know, they say they're only as good as what you've done today. Um, that can be true as well. Um, we have to keep making progress. Otherwise, we come, become complacent. Sometimes progress gets really derailed when it's completely self-serving. After a while, when our feet get back underneath us, we should be investing in other people's lives like this gentleman's doing here. That's an investment in other people's lives by his profession of his faith and actually quoting the Bible that he has to use as his guidebook and his flight plan. Hope you guys got as much out of this as I did. I appreciate you guys tuning into the show and subscribing. We got some new subscribers. Thank you for your interaction with the show. It means a lot. It's encouraging to me that we're getting in the right path here as the small tweaks and adjustments I'm making. You know, please consider your own spiritual journey. It's a powerful part of our conversation. If you got something that's just something you're doing to be defiant towards what you heard in you know Sunday school or whatever growing up, maybe that wasn't the right thing. Maybe the reason you don't believe in God is just because you don't want to believe in what other people did that hurt you be the first one to say there's a lot of pastors out there that like to punch right in the freaking throat. Um, there's a lot of a lot of religious people out there that just want to slap with their self-righteous crap, you know, that they come to you with the Bible and talk down to you because of whatever it is that you may not necessarily agree with them on. Um, the candid, that's my candid view on it. It's why I don't necessarily co-sign religion. I say necessarily because there are things about religious behaviors that sometimes are, you know, I can see it. Um, for me, the, none of that gave me power in understanding where my spiritual part was. It was words like this man saying, and when my ears heard them exactly the way he's delivering it in my jail cells, I, I didn't know this guy that he wasn't the one delivering it. This was actually a me and a God thing. And I read it that way. Well, as soon as I read it with that power that I'm a soldier of a great king and my job is to follow his orders the best I possibly can. And I'm not a perfect person. He knows that going into it. So we're good. And I, I, I can uh, live, I can live like that. So hope you guys find peace, find your way. Um, if you, you know, this is not, a, again, not a religious channel. This is Chris. This is, that's what I believe. And I, this gentleman today really encouraged me. So hopefully it's an encouragement to you. Um, if it's a, this, this isn't your cup of tea, tune in the next video. Maybe it'll be a little bit more of your flavor. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. And between now and the next time we talk, please stay out of trouble.